Hey guys, Brendan Productions here, and welcome to this tutorial. Now, this tutorial is going to be available on youtube.com slash Productions and thedigitalcraft.com. So if you don't know what thedigitalcraft.com is, it's pretty much a, a collection of videos where uh, that you can learn about the basic functions of using a computer. Everything, everything you really need to learn, from generating a basic web page to... Uh, replacing smiles or faces in Photoshop. Uh, so most of my tutorials are on there, so be sure to check me out there. And um, this tutorial is actually going to be on how to use a background worker. Now a background worker is an object that allows you to do work in the background of your program without affecting anything else. Um, I'll give you a quick example as soon as I start up this, uh, this uh, application. So I'm just going to name it background worker and uh, we'll go ahead and load it up okay now that we've got our uh, our form, form loaded um, I'm going to give you a quick example of why you would want to use a background worker now um, this is the most common example, so I'll uh, I'll just give it to you because it is so common. So in order to replicate this, you're going to need a label and a button. And what we're going to need the label to do is uh, pretty much count to a thousand. So we're going to double click on the button and say for i equals zero to one hundred. Uh, label one dot text equals i. Label one dot refresh. So a very simple piece of code there, it pretty much just creates a variable i, sets it to zero, and makes it go to a hundred, and uh, yes, and every time it changes we're going to, uh, make it wait just a tiny bit. So um, once we run this application, everything seems to be going but good but then as soon as we press uh, the button here our application becomes responsive until it will actually complete this operation so once this number reaches 100 our application will become re-responsive now uh, this can become a pain if your application is downloading files or counting in the background uh, because it also lags up with downloading files and if you've been following my MySQL tutorials you'll notice that it also lags up when it's updating the MySQL servers now today I'm going to show you how to use a background worker to actually prevent this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually add our, a background worker to our project. This can be found in all Windows forms and then uh, B for background worker. And then you're just going to want to add that in. And uh, the background worker also supports progress bars. So we're going to go ahead and add a progress bar to our project so we know how far we are done. Okay. So um, we're going to pretty much be doing the same thing except with a background worker. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the code from the button. And um, there's a few things we need to set with a background worker. We need to make sure that worker report reports progress is true. Otherwise, it will not work with the progress bar. And then uh, if we double click on the background worker, it'll be automatically background worker one dot or do work. This is good. This is exactly what we need. And then we just need to paste the code right in there. Except um, the only thing is we need to make sure that it reports its progress bar or its progress. So what we need to say is right under label one dot text is background worker one dot report progress and uh, the progress percentage is going to be I. And uh, then we're just going to say progress bar one dot value equals background worker one dot uh, progress no oh wait no no okay so just ignore that last bit uh, right there so pretty much what this code is doing it's creating a integer i and setting it equal to zero and then it's telling the computer to make that i equal 100 but um, every time it goes up a number we're changing the label to what i is we're making the background Oh, worker report its progress as I so if 
i is 50, then obviously we're at 50% done. And then it's making the computer sleep for 200 seconds, or 200 milliseconds. And then we're just refreshing the label so it uh, displays the, uh, the most prevalent i, if you will. So um, now what we need to do is actually change the progress bar when background worker one dot is reporting the progress. So under the actions of background worker one, we need to change it to progress changed. And this is every time the background worker reports its progress. And we're just going to say progress bar one dot value equals background worker dot no e dot progress percentage. Now, we haven't used E in uh, any of our tutorials, pretty much, but um, what it is, is as you can see here where it says progress changed, there's byval E as uh, progress changed event args. Now, this is pretty much just the default variable with dealing with any properties of uh, this background worker one pertaining to its progress being changed. So we're just saying that it's progress percentage. No big deal there. And then what we want to do is also select the... Uh, run worker completed which means it's done completing the task uh, we're going to display a message box saying uh, actually we're gonna make label one dot text equal to success so once it counts to 100 progress bar gets full um, once the background worker is done we're going to display the text box or the text we're gonna change the text of the label to success now I'm just going to double check uh, our properties of the background worker, make sure that uh, all all of this is set. You could even support cancellation if you'd like. In fact, that's good, so you can cancel the background worker if anything goes wrong. And now when we double click on the button, we just need to say background worker one dot run worker async, which is short for run run worker asynchron a synchronously synchronously I think it's pronounced. Um, it pretty much just means run it at the same time that the program is operating. So now if we start debugging, if you remember when we first did this, it uh, froze up our program, but if we press button 1 now, oh wait, an error. Okay, oh yes, yes. Good thing uh, this popped up because this brings me to another thing. If you're going to uh, use a background worker, this error will appear if you're trying to edit any controls in the form. Across uh, that operation not valid, a uh, control label when ex accessed from thread other than thread it was created on. Now, in order to uh, get by this, you're going to need to use what's called delegates, but um, that's a whole nother tutorial. So right now, what we're going to do is simply make it so our uh, form ignores this error. So we're going to do this by when the form loads, we're going to set its property to me.cross or me.check for illegal cross thread calls equal to false. So it will not check for that error at all. And then it's going to uh, give you a little error. Uh, you could put simply replace me with control. And uh, now we can debug again and we should not get that error. So let's press button one. And uh, as you notice, we're allowed to move the form as the label changes and the progress bar is actually going as the numbers go. So everything is working great. We're able to uh, maximize the form, minimize the form, and move it all while it's going. And um, once the progress bar gets full and the numbers get full, then uh, we should get a message box. Oh, I mean, it should change to success, which it did. Very nice. Uh, we could probably press button one again and uh, it would reset itself. Yes, beautiful. So this will really help you if you are trying to download a file in the background because as you can see we can move the form and it doesn't interrupt any uh, whoop, it doesn't interrupt uh, any on form controls or anything. So it's just it's working in the background and it's moving the progress bar but it's not affecting the actual form itself. So um, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I definitely think it will help you in your programming experience. So thanks for watching and remember to have a great day.